News Panorama is a TV news magazine program that gives you the story behind the story. It tells the stories the way they should be told by capturing the larger skill. It deals with people's deep feelings on issues that, when brought to the fore, ultimately educates, informs, and entertains. News Panorama. Capture the larger scale. This week on News Panorama, we take a look at the effect of street children in the society, the Gen Z and its impact, Naira exchange rates, environmental sanitation, and on the spot with the Kwashiba State Commissioner for Environment, Mr. Moses Osogi. Welcome and thanks for joining me on the program News Panorama. I am Josephine Efanga. News Panorama. Capture the larger scale. If you have just tuned in, you are watching News Panorama. Generation Alpha, born into a world immense in technology, is growing up with unprecedented access to smartphones, tablets and computers. This exposure had a significant impact on their communication skills, cognitive abilities and social interaction. We take a look as Blessing Basi says we all can ensure that this generation grow equipped with the necessary skills to thrive in the ever-evolving digital society, the report. The influence of technology on Gen Alpha and also extending to, to Gen Z is undeniable. The constant exposure to phones, tablets and computers has shaped the way they communicate and absorb information. I found a way to convince myself that I was going to be completely fine going back on social media in a non-addictive way. Mistake number one. I thought maybe if I just put a time limit on the apps, then maybe I could enjoy social media without guilt. But as someone who was an addict to social media, it was just a lie I was telling myself to pretend that I was fine. The thing is, social media isn't really looked down upon for the most part. Sure, no one feels great about using TikTok and there are videos like mine sometimes that come up on the algorithm telling you that social media is bad, but it's legal and everyone does it. So it's not like other addictions where the world is really telling you you need to stop. So I'm making this video today to come clean and hold myself accountable for my addiction. And I hope that this video can resonate with you no matter what addiction you're struggling with. While technology has undoubtedly brought many benefits, it has also resulted in challenges such as poor spelling and grammar proficiency among these gender generations. Traditional statements are not any blog code that we talk, that we talk to or false. My name is Principal Selected David. We learn the concept of programming. First, we have to know what is programming. Programming is the act of giving the computer a set of instructions which can be computer. Many of them rely heavily on auto-correction features and shorthand language, impacting the ability to read and write in proper English. Now, envision a member of Gen Z raising a child from Gen Alpha. This scenario presents a unique blend of challenges and opportunity. As a parent, the Gen Z individual must navigate the nuances of digital literacy and set a positive example in balancing technology use with traditional forms of communication and learning. A tech hub builder, Emmanuel Umo, said one can thrive through by fostering a healthy relationship with technology while also emphasizing the importance of language skill and critical thinking. So you think beyond your normal self. So you don't think like all of that kids. So when kids are out there, they are people playing outside. So this is the this is not the case where we do all that. We want to teach you how to be very creative your time all right and then get to be very innovative with your words time and then you make it what a useful adventure 
it is pertinent to say that maybe or maybe not they have the potential to raise a gen alpha child who is equipped to thrive in an increasingly digitized world for crbc news panorama blessing basi reporting in a bid to restore the clean and green status of cross river state especially the state capital the cross river state government has continued to ensure monthly sanitation within Calabar metropolis to ensure the state returns to status quo of serene environment the report he said though compliance and acceptability level is high some members of the public are yet to come to terms with their exercises the environment commissioner maintained that a new approach will be explored to ensure public compliance while refuse generated during the exercise are properly evacuated even as we are moving there are some constraint we a, a kind of we interface with in the process in the course of this exercise is equally teaching us that what you have done today this is how you're going to do it tomorrow and so we are learning from there you understand so there are a lot of things that we're going to impute in this exercise to make sure that uh, like as we were coming, we saw some persons that are moving freely in the street. We are only uh, concentrating on vehicles. The next exercise, it, it, it has instilled in me that those persons needed to be arrested. You understand? Everybody who is moving on the street freely, that was supposed to be, you know, sweeping or taking care of the environment in a, a manner that will show that you are really appreciating what government is doing, we we'll arrest them. At the Kaikaukwa market, the commissioner frowned at the attitude of some marketers who displayed their product and warned that, subsequently, anyone or commodity found in the market during the sanitation exercise period will be confiscated. I must say, I will take my instruction the next time. Next time, next sanitation uh, exercise. After 10. The tax force drove through Calabar Road, White Market, White House, Ekwobasi, Main Avenue, Nidem Sangiso Road, MCC Road, and Ekorinum areas. During the exercise, cars, food items, among others, were seized for violation of the state environmental order, while defaulters were arrested and tried before the mobile sanitation court. Collins John, Seal Business. Over now to on the spot with the Koshiba State Commissioner for Environment, Mr. Moses Usogi. Welcome to On the Spot on News Panorama. Today we'll be speaking with the Commissioner for Environment, Mr. Moses Usogi. He'll be telling us on the state's environmental status, how the state can return to his clean and clean status. Welcome to News Panorama, sir. Thank you very much, Ms. Josephine. Okay, sir. So, uh, being the number one person in environment in Cross River State, who will be asking you some questions on environment and how we can sustain the clean status of Cross River State. Okay, sir. So, uh, every last Saturday of the month, we know that you mandated that Cross Riverians start environmental sanitation, and that has been working over some months now. The question is that some houses that comes out every last Saturday of the month to clean their environment and in the same way possibly their neighbor there's a house close to them and it's not occupied by anybody like undeveloped plots and some are houses that are not occupied by people so you find out that when these people clean their compound the next compound is not being cleaned because it's not being occupied in that situation what should be done because you see that this place is clean and the other place is messy what can be done in that situation sir I think it's uh, one of those indices we're working on. Uh, we actually observe what you just said, that uh, in the course of going around during the environmental sanitation uh, statewide exercise, we discover that there are some compounds that we people are not living there and the place remain untidy, whereas their neighbors are there, they, they kept their compounds clean. And so we, we have mandated the department in charge of that, the Minister of Environment, to give them a big man notice, the owners of those uh, compounds that are not occupied by persons. And so that is working. We are working on that. And very soon, the owners of those compounds 
will take care of their compounds. Okay, sir. Uh, is there any disciplinary uh, action that could be taken uh, on those that are found wanting on Environmental Sanitation Day? Those uh, measures are clearly spelled out. Uh, if we have uh, mobile courts, a strategic point in Calabar Metropolis and other urban centers in uh, Kosovo State, uh, the moment you are found wanting on the day of environmental sanitation, you are taken straight to the mobile court, and it is a mobile court that will judge you and prosecute you. Okay, sir. So most of this uh, sanitation thing, the market is the worst hit place. And we realize that these traders are being uh, collected levies by uh, some stakeholders in the market. What is your ministry doing to synergize with these people to make sure that there's consistent evacuation of waste from the market because they are the worst hits in terms of uh, sanitation? Yeah, the, the, your question is pregnant, two in one. Mm -hmm. uh, people are collecting levies from uh, the market uh, mm -hmm. uh, traders and uh, what are we going to do to make sure that uh, the refuse in those strategic points are being uh, evacuated? evacuated. Yeah. Uh, first and foremost, those who are doing that, uh, we discover that there are some impersonators who are you know, extorting money from the traders in the market, and we, we're taking note of that, and we had warned them, we, we called them for a meeting that, please stay clear from this act. The governor, the government, the minister of environment, had not engaged anybody to be extorting money from uh, uh, the traders or the market space. So, and so, uh, if you are found in that act from this moment, from when we gave them those, uh, or we had meetings with them, and the law will take its course. We, we, they will find nobody to blame. Then the aspect of uh, waste evacuation, we are trying our best. You can attest to the fact that when we came on board, it was not like that. The whole place was unkept everywhere defaced and so we swim into action first and foremost we started with uh, you know uh, every saturday's uh, sanitation with the market uh, traders and they comply you know uh, very well they comply with us we've been going there deceive the gutters evacuate waste clean everywhere and it's working out well the only place that we are found in, finding it very difficult to evacuate the waste we found there is uh, mbopa market because mm -hmm. where they dump the waste, the space that the truck can uh, pull in is very narrow. So we are, we are working on that. We realize that there's a market committee. What are you doing to ensure that there is proper handling of refuse? In, because it's not just about going to pack it in, the, evacuating the refuse every day. Proper handling of refuse in the market. What are you doing to synergize with this market committee to ensure that there's proper uh, handling of refuse in the market? Yeah, we, you know, refuse uh, waste management entirely is uh, a very tedious uh, task. task yeah. But uh, as experts, as people who have the responsibility solely to deal with uh, that aspect we have no option than you know to do the needful uh, we've called them educate them on what to do and you know human beings their recalcitrant attitude is something you cannot completely wipe out but we are trying our best we i think uh, what market the the executive we had a meeting with them in fact kata uh, calabar traders association as a whole i called them for a meeting several times in my office and i told them what we needed to do that synergy that collaboration needed to be enshrined to make sure because cleaning the environment or the market space you are not doing it for the government you are yes. doing it for yourself because a, 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 you know you say cleanliness is next to godliness, godliness. So, and so whatever you are doing to keep the place clean you're not doing it for us you're doing it for yourself so we've been able to instill that in them gradually they are, they are complying. Okay, sir. So, uh, there is this new trend uh, in Calabar Metropolis where people use untapped streets to plant uh, crops. Yes. And it's kind of defacing the environment. And this happened to fall in your under your office. The streets before Nidam Palace in Bikwa, if there's an untapped street there, when you go there, you see cassava and everything. So, the road now becomes very narrow because the two lanes have been used to plant crops. We have another one close to Marian Market. And even by my office, CIBC, the small road that leads to the prison's barracks, it's also the same thing. So what are you going to do to ensure that uh, this uh, is stopped in Calabar Metropolis? Well, when you mention it, I laugh because 
Uh, thank God you mentioned your own street. You are part of it. CRBC, one of the mouthpiece, the information a carrier is uh, better with this uh, situation. Yes. You know. One thing I always tell people to understand is Rome is not built in one Maybe, day. Yes. It's a gradual process. Mm -hmm. We'll get there. This is a government that we just took over and there were a lot of uh, you know, issues that we were confronted with. Uh, those streets that are not tired and people felt they could use them as their farms. Farms, yeah. Uh, somebody had called my attention to that once and then uh, we drove to the street. <laughs> and when we got there, it was an old woman. And basically, you would have said, this woman in her late 60s, what is she going to do with this thing that she's planting here? And it became very difficult for one to say, Ma, leave this leave place. This place. Yeah. But I think what we are trying to do in circumstances like that, what I do is, Ma, take this money. Go and see what you can do. Yeah. Leave this place. But we discover the moment that was done, another person, she left the place, another person now Second took over. Person. So that if she felt as this woman has been settled, yeah, she, she will be settled. as well be settled in that manner. But when, when my attention was called again to that place, I told her, Madam, in my place, you don't do destructive mechanism unnecessarily mm. until when you're being pushed to doing that. And so it's a taboo to just go into somebody's crop or somebody's and farm and start pass, destroying yeah. it. Uh, I'm going to give you the last warning. Remove these things from here. And I don't want to see. If we come here again and, you, and we, we found you planting, this is government road. Yes. Whether it's tarred or it's not, not, it belongs, this space belongs to government. Yes. And so if we arrest you, you're, you're going to pay yourself. And the, the money you're going to pay yourself is what we're coming to use to clear the road. She was just laughing. She said she saw us giving, she heard that yeah. we give that mama money. That's mm. why she came to plan so that, that the economy is hard. hard. I said, even though the economy is hard, that woman, you can see her age, even you were supposed to be taking care of, of her. her. And so for that of CRBC, you, sh you, you should be doing the preaching like you are doing that. Please, whoever that is planting here should stop that. I, I witnessed that when we were returning from uh, the day we had a carnival, cultural carnival. Yes. As we finished from the exercise, we were returning back to our office. Okay. So somebody said there is a shortcut there. Cut, yes. So they said I, I should enter my vehicle. I said no, I want to do exercise. Yeah. So as I was striking, so there is a shortcut by CRBC. I said CRBC having a shortcut. And when we passed through, I saw what you were saying. So it's left for you people to assist us in that manner. No, Thank we you. also need the government to come and do that because as an agency, we might say, okay, these people stop planting, but they need the ministry as to take agency the action. belonging to who? This is government agency. Yes, but the ministry. So whatever action you are taking, you are, you are as well representing government. Yes, but the ministry saddled with the responsibility have to take. See, this. okay, okay, ministry saddled with the responsibility. I, 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 yeah. I underline that. Please. Yes. See, let me ask you a question. Police are saddled with the responsibility of arresting somebody with weapon. Let's use that as a case study. Yes. If you are carrying weapons, passing on the street, exposing a whichever way, and police caught you, they will arrest you. Are you telling me if you see an ordinary person displaying weapons or they are trying to do something, you will not call the attention attention of police, or you will not do if you have the capacity to arrest the person? I will call the attention of the police, and that is why we have brought no, the two I say two things. Two things. I will call not... the attention of the police. Or doing the needful no. by if you have the capacity within yourself to arrest the situation. At this point, we, we, we don't do have the capacity to arrest. But that's why you are calling government. Yes, that's why we are calling on the ministry government. responsible for that to take care of it. There's no problem. I think yes, we will we'll come to that. Okay, sir. So uh, now uh, over to the dumpsters. Now, do you think that uh, these dumpsters are properly uh, positioned? Because you realize that there are so many places that do have dumpsters. And then some are not properly positioned. You see some just by the road, just very close, not like in between the streets, just by the road, especially roads like Marion, which you know that most of our tourists also pass through there. We shouldn't have one that is just by the road, rather it can be in between the streets or something. Like the one at uh, by Assemblies of God is well positioned. Yeah, it's fine. But we have some that you just keep by the road and it's not okay. So what, do you think that uh, something could be done yeah, in that area. There, there, are, there are two things uh, I deduce from your question here. Yes. 
uh, not properly positioned, positioned and, and not enough. Enough, yes. Uh, I agree with you in the first position. In fact, the two aspects, I yeah. agree with you. There are some that are not properly positioned. And most times, after they remove the waste, the, it's the attitude of some of these uh, truck drivers. Instead of positioning it in a manner that will not cause traffic obstructions, yeah. they won't do that. For their own convenience, after they'll after removing, they'll just leave it there and go. Mm -hmm. So we have seen that in several aspects. Aspect, and yeah. I have called the attention of uh, the uh, contractors that please caution your drivers. After removing the waste, from the receptacle beans, they should pro uh, position them properly so that one, it will not cause obstruction to all the users. And then uh, the second aspect of it is uh, whether they are enough. They are not enough. In fact, that's a major problem we are having now. Before now, and from my record, I saw where 2,000 uh, dumb uh, dust beans yeah. were produced. And that was uh, the government of Lier as a then. Yeah. So if you are, you are counting, 16 years counting now, that was when they produced dumpsters. This waste bin, you can agree with me that some of these waste are acidic in nature. Yeah. And so the moment you dump them, you leave them there like in the previous uh, regime for one, two, three, four days, yes. it's going to affect the dust bin. You understand? And after some time, the thing starts rusting, and the scavengers capitalize on, on this. That, yeah. The moment they saw that the thing has started you yeah. know, having some issue, they crack, crack it, they pieces yes. it, and take it away. The dumb uh, scavengers are contributing heavily to this problem we're having. They have cutted away so many of the receptor, uh, receptacle beans, and so many of them, people will set fire in the night they will just come there put fuel put kerosene or whatever set fire inside the receptacle beans and so before you realize it, the next day the thing has burned and yeah. affected it so it's one of the major problems that is confronting our quest to tackling waste problem in the state but <coughs> trust me we are on, on top of it we're mm. on our toes the governor is not sleeping uh it's a man who is so passionate about the people's yearning. Waste management in Cross River State, Calabar Metropolis precisely, is a thing that is not giving the governor, you know, sleepless uh, rest at night. So it's working assiduously to making sure that we have enough, not only a few that would tackle the problem we're having, enough strategically placed at, uh, uh, in Calabar Metropolis to salvage this situation, to arrest a situation of inadequate uh, waste yes, bin. Yes. So uh, recently, like I, when I had a, an interview with uh, HFM, I explained the same thing that they have given. They started. I mean, uh, NDDC has started giving us uh, yeah. uh, uh, receptacle yes, beans. Yes. The okay. governor told me that they are going to give us uh, 300, and they have started bringing. Yes. If you go around, you can see some of them strategically placed. So within a, a short period of time, we are going to be. Uh, happy with the way things are going to be done as regards the receptacle beans in uh, Calabar Metropolis. From your response, you made mention that the waste beans were last produced in the government of Senator Yeah. So therefore means that in the past eight years, we've not had new sets of waste uh, beans in Cross River State. Sure. That's really a sad one. Okay, now the rainy season is setting in. We always have casualties of trees falling down. Falling down. What is your ministry doing to ensure that before this rain comes in fully, that these trees are being pruned to avoid casualties? You know, we have longevity in a lifespan. There is a level at which you stay and you, you become deteriorating. Yes. The same thing happens to the trees. These on, on, ornamental trees, they have a long span, a lifespan, you understand? And so we are taking cognizance of that, and we are working on that. They, I think there was some time when the governor was on his way to the airport, so 
he, he witnessed a situation where a tree fell down and you know fell on a vehicle Very with somebody cool. inside. inside. Uh, we thank God that the person did not die. And uh, when he called my attention, prob uh, probably uh, ordinarily I would have said, okay, if it were some governors, he wouldn't have, you know, bothered himself. Be conscious he about exactly, that. Exactly. was so funny. He said, please take care of this situation. And I interfaced with the people. I asked them to write. They wrote to me. And I mean, he asked me to even recommend what I think he should approve for the people. And I did it. The family is so happy to tomorrow. They have been praying for the government. The government. Though that's not what we're praying. Mm -hmm. We are working on it. It's not that the thing is coming. It has already started. The last uh, two days, I was going home. But most time, I do inspection at night. From 11, 12, 1, I go around to inspect the problems that are confronting the environment. environment. So I discovered that the rain that fell with wind storm, <clears throat> you know, pulled down so many trees, some branches, you know, even in my own house, you understand, uh, I was affected. So we are working on that. My team are on ground. What is part of the reason why I delayed to come to office? I woke up this morning, I had to go around to inspect whether the instruction I leash out were carried out. You understand? So we are working on, we are cutting down those trees. The ones that need pruning, we are pruning them. But what we are saying, warning to the public, there are some situations where some trees are not even old enough. They, don't, they have not even shown any sign of falling. Some people, they are capitalizing on what is going on to prune them and probably using them as fuel wood, and which is too, too bad. So we are warning, these are trees owned by government, yes. and they are backed by law. Before you cut down any tree, you must take permission from Ministry of Environment, and we must send our team to inspect whether the tree you want to cut down or you want to prune has those conditions attached at that particular uh, moment because there are some factors that we'll see we know that okay this tree there are some of these trees that need treatment we don't mm -hmm. even need to cut them okay. down just like a human being is sick you you are you are sick you know that you are you you are going to die okay. or they should go and buy a casket to prepare for your burial no they should take you to the hospital diagnose to see the problem that is affecting you and immediately treat the problem those are the the, the traits in these uh, mm -hmm. trees that when you see a tree and you felt this tree is going to fall down or is going to have issues, I call our attention. You understand? I know we have so many of those problems, you know, so uh, spread in town. Just call our attention. We'll go there in a very proactive manner and address the issue. There's a team that is going down. Any tree that they saw that this tree is old enough to cause a disaster, we cut it down. So, mm -hmm. but it's not easy. The public should take it easy with us because this is a government that has come to work for the benefit of the people. Okay, so I actually like the warning about cutting down the trees because a few months ago, here in Calabar Metropolis, I realized that people were consistently cutting down the tree in the open. For instance, my area, Ibom layout, so many good trees were being cut down, and I wondered why. Not only in Ibom layout, even along the highways. And these trees are not very old trees. Good. Now, when is Cross River State going to start planting trees in order to replace these ones that have been cut down? It's okay. I think uh, there's one thing at a time. One after the other. another. Mm -hmm. uh, we, it's already in the pipeline. You understand? Afforestation in Calabar Metropolis. It's not a everything you just come and plant. plant. There are uh, measures in place. We we have plants on ground. The nursery is coming. The ones we had, if you go behind there, you see a nursery. I met that nursery there. Mm -hmm. We had made uh, plans to uh, go and uh, replant them. Okay. You understand? And you know, you don't plant trees in the dry season. This is a season, this is a time that we are going to start planting some of the trees we have here. And when the nursery we are expecting comes, we are going to spread and make sure that everywhere we cut tree, we are going to plant another one. And the other places that we don't have tree and they needed a tree, we are going to equally plant there as well. 
Okay, thank you very much, sir. So, do you have any other thing you need the public to be informed about that we have not asked and you think is needful for the public to know? Well, I think uh, <laughs> the message to the public is simple. The Ministry of Environment is uh, a body that interferes almost on a daily basis with the populace. And so, uh, there are some activities we are carrying that some persons are not finding it uh, funny or uh, where with us. Like uh, some of these people who are selling at the middle of the streets. Some streets, if you go there, this is the heart of the town that when we have visitors, this is a tourist state. And we are always expecting visitors. Either official visitors or unofficial visitors. So you don't expect to be tap on your door that prepare for a visitor that is coming so we must always be on our toes to make sure that the town is clean is kept clean everywhere is kept in order and the orderliness is what we have said if you go to stadium opposite stadium adjacent to uh Orlando filling station you see people selling there we had won them i equally led a team of task force to my to that place we seize things from them as a measure that don't sell in this place is not a market place go to the market space and be selling your fruit or go and get shops you can't be selling in a place like this somebody coming from the airport is going to pass through here into the town you go to mcc by moby the same thing that is going on there and we had told them but when you go and seize their things eh, why are you seizing my things is this where i'm surviving nobody says you should not survive but do they need to do the right thing at the right time. Mm. So, perseverance, uh, people who reside in Calabar should please bear with us, cooperate with us, synergize with us in the needs or what we are doing to salvage the situation. Calabar, Crossover State must be returned back to its past glory, if not more than. That's our target. That we are going to return this state. Somebody will come to this state and see the state as clean, green, and serene. We are working on that seriously. Very soon, anybody who is passing, like the commercial uh, parks, vehicles owners, commercial vehicle, uh, vehicle owners, I discovered that that attitude of people eating biscuits, sweet, or whatever, and fling the, the empties outside through the windows is still going on. Our task force are already on ground. Anybody found in that act, a vehicle owner will be arrested. Okay, so Thank now, from what you've said, it brings me now to the area where we used to have little dustbins by the roadside. By the roadside, we're working on that. I, if you, you just that I've removed when we're trying to work on our the staircase, those things were there. We have, they are not enough. We're taking statistics of the position. The positioning of those uh, little ways being around. Okay, so in no time soon, we will have them we'll have across them. the states. Yes, yes. Okay. And all the vehicles, we have told them, you must have a waste basket in your vehicle. Okay. So anybody who is in that vehicle, call their attention that we will right there, use me, Minister of Environment, keep the uh, environment very clean. And anybody that fails to do that will be prosecuted. Bravo. You've heard from the Commissioner of Environment, Mr. Moses Ozoki. Please, the change begins with me and you. It is our responsibility to keep Koshiva State clean and green again. Over now to our presenter. That is all we have on our lineup this week. We hope to be back same time next week. Do keep a date with us. I am Josephine Efanga.